Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the 18th of June 2015. My name is Total Biscuit, rounding up today's Steam Daily Deals. If you missed that on yesterday's, there is a sale box for yesterday to round them up. You can find them down the bottom of the screen underneath the Monster Summer Game Deals. There's so many deals on these days. Hard to cover them all, which is why I don't. All right, let's kick it off, shall we, with Hand of Fate. Hand of Fate is really kind of neat, as I pointed out the last time that I played it. It's a third-person brawler, but the encounters are determined by a deck of cards, which you have some influence in constructing. So it's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure with a little bit of roguelite thrown in there for good measure, and a brawler. The brawling component is... It's okay. Like, it's not brilliant. It's certainly no Arkham Asylum or anything along those lines, but it's good enough. It's functional. It does the job. And the interesting thing is that every time you play through it, you're going up against different decks with different advantages and disadvantages. And there's just been a free update as well by the name of Murder at Sea, which has a brand new quest line available. So it's been updated quite a little bit actually since the game launched with DLC as well by the name of Wild Cards, which is also discounted as well. It's a lot of fun. I liked Hand of Fate a great deal. And regardless of the fact that the brawling is not particularly brilliant, the rest of the game makes up for that. Plus, the presentation is just gorgeous. Dying Light. It's probably the best thing that Techland's ever made, honestly. It was surprisingly polished and a really nice upgrade from what we saw from Dead Island. Much better game than Dead Island as far as I'm concerned. Nicer setting, more diverse, better combat, interesting crafting, and an excellent parkour system that works very, very well. As well as interestingly enough, a game that doesn't top out very quickly. There's still a lot to discover as you continue to level up, particularly until you get the grappling hook, which sort of changes the game around completely. It's got a reasonable multiplayer mode as well, which allows for in-game invasions and things like that. It's got a great deal of content for what it is, and it runs really well too. There's not really a lot of complaining that I've got to do about it, although you can check out my WTFs if you want to find out what those main complaints actually are. Maybe the story's not particularly brilliant, but I actually like Dying Light quite a bit, honestly. And if you do like the idea of a parkour-focused, open-world, zombie-killing game, then that's what Dying Light is. Ori and the Blind Forest. Absolutely gorgeous and heartwarming little game. But bloody hard. You'd be surprised. Looking at the screenshots, you think, oh, this is going to be quite casual. No, 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 no. This has got some quite nasty precision platforming going on in it, as well as quite a few Metroidvania elements, which unfortunately meant that I didn't enjoy the game. That doesn't mean the game is bad. It's not. It's very, very good. Great port. Not a great deal to complain about when it comes to Ori and the Blind Forest. And it is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, it is created with tender loving care. There's no real doubt about that. If I had one complaint about it, it's that it doesn't really do a great deal new. All of the things that you see in Ori and the Blind Forest have been done in other Metroidvania and platformers, and it's taking mechanics from various different sources. But it is a really enchanting world. It's absolutely magical. And if you're into that genre, then you could certainly do a hell of a lot worse than Ori. The Walking Dead Season 2. Alright, it's Telltale once again. This is probably the thing that I would say kicked off Telltale in a really big way. It's certainly not the first game they made. They made various remakes of things like Salmon Max and, of course, Monkey Island. But this is the point where they stopped making point and clicks and started making Telltale narrative experiences, which are sort of a mixture of quick time events, a little bit of puzzling and exploration, and those timed dialogue choices with permanent decisions that affect the way that characters react to you in future episodes. It's arguably the best one they've done. I mean, the subject matter is great, so that certainly helps with a really interesting cast of characters, and it also helps that they actually finished it. Whereas with the other stuff that they're currently working on right now, G Game of Thrones and Tales from the Borderlands, they haven't actually finished those games yet, and there's some fairly significant delays between episodes, so you do want to watch out for that. This is worthy of your time, though. It's well discounted. You can also buy the original with a great discount as well. So if you like The Walking Dead, if you like the subject matter, and you're willing to sacrifice, I suppose, mechanics for narrative storytelling and those quick-fire choices, then Walking Dead is worthy of your time. Dungeon Defenders 2. This one is still in early access, so just bear that in mind. That's usually a big caveat. And this game is about 
tower defense of sorts. It's more like a horde defense game. You pick a character and then you slaughter your way through a bunch of enemies and you're able to construct various towers depending on which class you pick. You also level up, get loot, and you can also acquire pets and all sorts of things like that. The original game was fairly fun. This is an online-only game this time around, and it's not bad. It's, it's, it's getting there. One thing to bear in mind, though, is that the original game actually has a larger player base than this one at the moment, and that might be the place to go. It is certainly a more complete experience, and that one is also on sale, although it's not listed on the page because common sense. And that game is a pretty ridiculous 90% off. Bear in mind, though, it does have a huge amount of DLC, although all the DLC is also 90% off, and there happens to be a pack which will give you the whole thing for significantly less than just buying it individually. But yeah, it's, it's not bad. If you've got a group of friends to play with in particular to level up together with, then that's even better. And Dungeon Defenders does have a lot more variety in terms of classes because it's simply more developed at this point. So it's probably worth giving that one a try over the early access version at the moment. The Age of Wonders series. So the two standouts here are Age of Wonders Shadow Magic, which is absolutely fantastic if you're willing to endure the fact that it's a lot older, and Age of Wonders 3, which is the newer version, which I had an absolute blast with. So this is a game about ruling a fantasy kingdom and also engaging in tactical fantasy battles, which are surprisingly in-depth compared to something like, say, Heroes of Might and Magic. You've got a wide variety of classes and races to play as. You've got a large variety of spells to play with, as well as a full kingdom-building 4X kind of experience. There are also two expansions for it, which are discounted, but not by a great deal. The basic version of the game is well-priced, whereas the DLC is a little bit pricey at the moment, I think, for most people. But I would certainly recommend Age of Wonders. I had a great deal of fun with it. If it does seem a little bit rich for your tastes, then you will enjoy the hell out of Shadow Magic, I would imagine. Just bear in mind that Shadow Magic is quite an old game. It still looks good, but it's a 4x3 experience. There's a little bit of UI struggling that you're going to have to deal with because it's a little bit older, but it's, it's still pretty damn good nonetheless. Anno 2070. I like this game a great deal. There's one thing that I don't enjoy, and that is the DRM associated with this bloody thing. It uses Tagers, as in one of the worst DRM systems in existence, which has a three machine activation limit. That's the biggest problem that this game has. It's actually almost crippling, I'm afraid. Thankfully, the sale does make that a little bit more palatable, but I do want to make you aware of that nonetheless. If you are going to pick it up, then I would probably grab the Complete Edition because it's not much more expensive, and it does come with the DLC, which includes the big expansion pack, Deep Oceans, as well as the smaller little bits here and there. Now, the Anno series is, for the most part, about economic management, building cities on islands and uh, creating supply chains with various industries and things like that, although this one happens to be set in the future, which is really quite interesting. The other Anno game are quite good as well, by the way, if you can actually find them. And the game prior to this, which was Anno 1404, is known in the US as Dawn of Discovery. It's not as well discounted, though, so maybe that wouldn't be such a good idea. It's, it's not like Anno 2070 isn't a good game. It is. It's a great game. It's just Ubisoft needs to take that DRM. Come on. I mean, this, is, this has been on for years now. This game's been out since 2011. Get rid of the damn DRM system, for God's sake. They have so many downvotes and negative reviews as a result of this, and I don't blame people, you know. Tying it to Uplay and also requiring Tagers is just horrible. And that's a shame, because it's actually a really great strategy game. Grid Autosport. This one was a little bit contentious among fans of the series because they changed the driving physics significantly in comparison to Grid 1 and 2, which were pretty damn well-liked games. It plays something like a simcade, I guess is probably the best way to describe it. A bit of a mixture straddling the line between simulator and arcade racing, and some people didn't like that. They weren't really a fan of the handling. The one thing that really got me about it was that while it's a great racer, at least in my honest opinion, the career mode has been made somewhat boring, and just in the way that it's presented. It really is a bunch of menus and experience bars and 
it doesn't really give you that career driving fantasy, at least in my honest opinion. Also, good luck finding a multiplayer game in this game. There are very few people actually playing it these days online. Outside of that, though, decent Simcade racing game, pretty decent PC port, and also moddable. So if you're looking for that, then it's not a terrible choice. Medieval Engineers. This one's an early access, and it's about constructing siege equipment and knocking things over. And it is well-liked. It's by the developers of Space Engineers. They're consistently adding fairly significant upgrades to this game. They just put in the survival mode. They've also just put in castle sieges. This seems like the kind of thing that I would really, really enjoy. I just want to wait till it's done. That's, that's the problem with games like this. They always end up coming out in early access, and I just don't want to spoil the experience or indeed have it soured by it being incomplete. It really is about building siege engines, though, and knocking things over. If that's your bag, and of course you have some friends to play it with, then this might be right up your alley. Just bear in mind it's early access. It's still very much incomplete. It's nowhere near as complete as Space Engineers. So, you're going to be waiting a while for the full experience. Evolve. Oh dear, Evolve. One of perhaps the most high-profile flops on PC this year. The player base for this game has evaporated within months. And of course, this is a multiplayer-only experience for the most part. You can play with the AI, but it sort of defeats the point of the exercise, really. And Evolve currently has a player base of only 500 concurrent people. Now, I do expect that to spike up, but essentially the player base died at the start of April. Bear in mind the game came out in February. Now, it had tanked in April and it continued to decline and it never recovered. I had a lot of complaints about Evolve, honestly, and I really felt that it was just too simple for what it was. I felt that the glorified game of hide and seek really wasn't going to be enough to keep people interested in the long term and i didn't think there was enough mechanical depth although the the idea was sound i mean i love the idea i've told you many times before about how much i adore this asymmetric multiplayer notion and i've enjoyed many games that have done that but unfortunately evolve in many ways has let people down in terms of its longevity and as a result the player base has vanished so maybe the sale will help but I'm afraid this one may go down as a failed experiment. You know, it's, it's half a game. It needed more than what it had. Life is Strange. So this is a sort of Telltale-esque narrative game. But it does have some interesting ideas behind it, particularly the notion of time travel. Now, they're three episodes into this, and it's been fairly well received. The main problem I had with it was probably the voice acting and the dialogue. It's certainly somewhat angsty, but it is a teen drama set in a fairly high-end sort of private-ish school, so I suppose that is to be expected. It is full of surprises, though, and the time rewind mechanic is very intriguing to me. The sort of permanent choices that you can make in that game are reminiscent of stuff from David Cage and, of course, things from Telltale. So if you can deal with the somewhat angsty cast of characters, then it is a really interesting episodic game, and it's got a lot going for it, as well as a lot of detail. You know, it's the thing that really surprised me. There's the sheer amount of detail in this game, even minor things, minor reactions that you get from characters, and the ability to look at books and photographs and things that are scattered all around the environment. There's so much to engross yourself in here, if that's your bag. I mean, just don't expect a great deal of actual gameplay. The Batman franchise. All right, well, the first game in the Batman franchise was less of an open world game and a little bit more sort of Bioshock-esque, and it was called Arkham Asylum. And then they opened things up with Arkham City, and then they released Arkham Origins, which wasn't by the same developer and was not as good. It's still okay. It's better now that they fixed some of the bugs. It was buggy as hell on launch, but... I would say Arkham City is a great bet if you're looking for more open world. If you're looking for more of the Bioshock sort of Metroidvania-esque thing where it's like, oh, you can't pass this until you have this gadget, then Arkham Asylum is the better game in that regard. A lot more content in Arkham City Game of the Year edition, though. They actually bundled in all the DLC there, and it's really well priced. And of course, this sale is coming right before the release of Arkham Knight, which is the next in the series. The PC port on pretty much all counts is good. I didn't really have too many problems with it. And I'd be surprised if you haven't already played the Batman games. If you haven't, though, this is an ideal time to pick them up. I doubt they're going to get any cheaper than this. This is really, really good value. Shovel Knight. 
Maybe one of the only platformers that I've actually enjoyed in the past few years. You know I don't like platformers, but Shovel Knight has to be appreciated for the amount of detail and just how well it controls. Hey, a lot of people try to make these retro-inspired games. It's like, yeah, we're going to revisit our childhood. This is like the 8-bit games of old, the 16-bit games of old. This one actually is like the 8-bit games of old, only in many ways better. They've taken 8-bit design philosophy from the NES era, and yet they put their own spin on it, added a few modern mechanics, and yet just still kept it faithful. And it controls so very well, it's got a great variety of levels and all sorts of obstacles to uncover, as well as plenty of content and an amazing soundtrack. Great boss fights, too, in this game, by the way. I've got to say, some really impressive stuff going on with it. Shovel Knight is highly recommended if you happen to be into platformers. Ark, also known as the game Strippen, is currently obsessed with. This isn't actually a sale compared to, I think, yesterday, where it had exactly the same price, so I'm not really sure why it's been put in this grid. But this game right now is fairly bloody popular. This is the flavor of the month survival game. And you can probably see why, because it launched in early access in a more developed state than most, with a better graphics engine being the Unreal 4 engine. And you can ride around on dinosaurs, build settlements, and construct firearms. If that is not a combination of things that people enjoy, then I don't really know what is. But it's a multiplayer survival game one way or the other, so the usual caveats apply. Your experience is most assuredly going to vary, depending on who you run into and who you actually play with. When it comes to games like this, I certainly don't have the time to play them, and the character permadeath aspect for me personally is a big turnoff that people should be aware of. Some people absolutely love that stuff. That is not my bag, though. And finally, The Escapists. So this is a sandbox of sorts whereby you are in prison and you have to try and figure a way out. In order to do that, you have to complete various jobs, level up stats, craft, learn the routines of the prison, make deals, and eventually escape. There's also a level editor for it, which is even better because that means you can download new prisons and you can create your own as well. It's got a neat little 8-bit aesthetic going on with it. And it's both damn unique and well executed, surprisingly enough. You just don't see all that many games like that. If I have one little complaint, just a little complaint, it's that there is fighting in the game, there is actual combat, and the combat system is definitely not particularly evolved. You know, it's a very, very basic, very functional, very threadbare sort of combat system. Nothing really out of the ordinary there. A little bit of DLC available as well. Not a big discount on this game or indeed the DLC either, but that game has not been out for very long, only a few months, so that is to be expected. A really unique prospect, though. All right, folks, that is me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching the sale box. I'll be rounding up the sales tomorrow, and, of course, for the rest of the Steam sale, which is going on for the next few days up to June the 21st. I'll see you next time.